Welcome back to the show. Now, have you got the answer to our break time riddle? Look into my face, I am somebody. Look into my back, I am nobody. Did you get it? It's a mirror. I didn't get that one either. Right, we're going over to Rosie next uh, for Shanti B for some relaxing yoga. Now, yoga is great for less stress, healthy heart, balance and flexibility. I think we all need that. Enjoy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rosie from Shanti B in Biker. Today we're gonna to go through an energizing yoga session to help shake off any tension in the body and get us in our bodies. So come to the front of your yoga mat if you have one. Don't worry if you don't have one. You can be on a carpet, you can be on a wooden floor, you can have a rug underneath you. I've got my shoes off. I invite you to take your uh, socks and shoes off too and join me at the front of the mat. So I'm gonna have my feet parallel with each other. My hips are over my feet and I'm gonna take a little bend into my knees, a little tuck of the tailbone. I'm gonna rest my hands down by the side of my body, gaze is forward, I'm gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna bring my awareness to my breath. Inhaling in through the nose, exhaling, if possible, back out of the nose. So we're just bringing an awareness to the breath. Maybe we can feel our legs a little bit more active and engaged now, we're grounding down. Inhaling, maybe we can feel the ribs expand from side to side. Let's flicker the eyes back open. Straighten the legs. So we're gonna bring our hands together. We're gonna to create a little bit of energy in between the hands. I want you to rub the hands really quickly, really fast against each other. So our shoulders are gonna get quite uh, achy here maybe. Straight away, we start to feel the whole body having to work. And when we release the hands slowly, not yet, <laughs> we're gonna feel energy between the hands and we're gonna play around with that. Keep going for five, four, shoulders are really feeling it now, three, two, and slowly, not too far apart. There we go, there it is, that little ball of energy. Don't move the hands too far apart. And if you've lost it, you could do it again. <laughs> Nice. And now just place the hands back down by the body. Deep inhale, long exhale. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do something called palm tree pose. We're gonna interlace the fingers. As we inhale, we're gonna reach the hands up above the head. We can have the gaze forward. That might be enough for you if you wanna inhale and come up onto your tiptoes as well. And then exhale as we bring the hands down. We can use the nose, inhaling and exhaling, or we can use the mouth, inhaling in through the nose, exhaling out of the mouth, whatever works for you. So interlace your hands. As you inhale, we're gonna do this three times. Reach the hands up above the head when they get in line with the heart. You can maybe start coming up onto the tiptoes, feel the legs engage. End of the exhale. Slowly coming down. Feel the whole body working here, hey? <laughs> Interlace the fingers. We reach the hands forward as they get to the heart. We lift the heels up like a pencil. This is actually called pencil as well in some practices. And then as we exhale, we bring it down. Nice. Starting to feel a little bit more in our bodies. Let's take a forward fold. We're going to pivot at the hips. When you forward fold, don't worry about touching the hands to the floor. We're just gonna let the back relax. Take an inhale here. A little bend in the knees will make this a little bit softer for the hamstrings at the back of the legs, if you like. And exhale, forward fold. Let the head go, let the neck go. So the spine can quite literally unravel. If you like, you could straighten your legs we're trying to keep the hips over the ankles. I'm gonna hold on to either elbow and release the head in between the upper arms. This is called ragdoll. Remembering a little bend in the knees might make this a little bit more soft for you today. Inhaling. And exhaling. We're gonna come up engaged. 
So first, let's release the elbows. Let's root down through the feet, all four corners. We want to feel that connection. Then we tuck at the bottom of the spine. We tuck the tailbone. As we tuck the tailbone, we push down through the feet. We're inhaling. We're going to rise to standing. Inhale, inhale. All the way up. And exhale. We rest. Back in standing. Okay, we're going to do something called goddess now, also known as horse. I'm going to step to one side and we come into what we call a standing straddle. Standing straddle. Don't have the feet too wide. Nice, comfortable distance apart from each other. We're going to have a little bit of fun here. We're going to point the toes out and we're going to sink into the position, just as needed. So this is also called horse. So the knees are over the ankles and the hips might be a little bit higher or if you're feeling a little bit, like you want a little bit more of a workout, more energy today, you'd sink the hips in line with the knees. You can rest the hands onto the legs for a little bit more support. We've been doing both nose and mouth breathing. Let's have a little play around. We're gonna inhale in through the nose, and we're gonna exhale, we're gonna stick our tongue out. <sighs> okay? <laughs> Let's do a few more like that, see how it feels. It's a release. As we exhale out of the mouth, it relieves tension from the body and also tension that we can get, that we can gather in the jaw. Let's do three like that. Close your eyes, look at the floor, look at the person next to you, whatever feels good. One more deep inhale. <laughs> nice, okay. We're going to slowly, because our hips are probably quite feeling this now, lift back up. We're going to toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, and we're back in standing. So here, we're in what we call a tabletop. My hands are spread nice and wide. My shoulders are over my wrists, and my hips are over my knees. I'm going to untuck my toes because it's more comfortable like this. You could always tuck your toes for a bit more engagement into the backs of the legs. As we inhale, we're gonna open the chest and gaze up towards the ceiling. Notice my belly buttons drop down. As I exhale, I start to arch my back to the ceiling and tuck my chin to my chest. Exhale, 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 exhale. And then we're gonna inhale as we open. This is the cow bit. And exhale as we arch. Exhaling out of the nose or mouth. This is the cat bit. And maybe you want to get a little bit wild here. Maybe you want to play around with uh, just intuitive movement. It feels quite nice because we're grounded at our four limbs. Well, yeah, two legs and two hands are all on the floor. And so we, you know, when you're standing, we can feel a bit like we've got loose limbs. You don't really know what to do with them. When they're grounded on the floor, we can really allow the movement to come into the spine and keep the breath strong here. Play a little bit with it, see what feels nice. Try not to bring the shoulders too far forward over the wrists, otherwise you'll put unnecessary strain. Keep them directly over the wrists or a little bit further behind. Okay, so you can keep doing this kind of movement for as long as feels nice for you. Or maybe you might want to return to uh, earlier movement that we did and extend that. Uh, do what feels nice for you. I'm going to come onto the ground now. I'm going to lie my back. We're going to do a little bit of shaking and then we're just going to fully relax and let go and find a calm space. Uh, okay, so come onto your backs nice and slowly because we're going to bring our knees and hands and legs and everything up and we're going to shake. We're going to shake because shaking relieves tension and also really gets us in our body obviously. So shake and see if you can let go a little bit here. Really shake, shake anything that feels like it hasn't been shook before. Maybe shake your head a little bit, close your eyes if it feels nice. And then when you've had quite enough of shaking, you can just slowly bring the body to the floor. And my feet are gonna be wider than my hips. I'm gonna roll my shoulders underneath my body a little bit. I'm going to rest my hands either quite wide or, or somewhere on the body. 
I know you could be here for, for 20 minutes if you wanted. This is where we find calm. This is where we observe the breath again. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling completely. I invite you to close your eyes. Get a blanket. Get comfortable. Inhaling and exhaling. Connecting with anything you feel on a physical level. Any little movements in the leg, warm or cold. Try and find stillness if you can. Inhaling and exhaling. As I said, you could be here as long as you like. With this being a short session today, we're gonna slowly bring conscious movement, mindful movement, back into the limbs. We're gonna place the feet onto the floor. Maybe give the knees a nice little squeeze in towards the body. A little rock, rock from side to side. When you're ready, we're gonna roll over onto one side. We're gonna use the hands to push the ground away and lift ourselves back up. We're gonna to come to a comfortable seated position on your mat or floor. We're gonna bring the hands to the heart center. We call this Anjali Mudra. Hands to the heart center, the base of the thumb meets the heart. Close the eyes. Give yourself a moment just to be thankful for the time that you've spent with yourself today. And thank you, namaste. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rosie. I'll have to try those ones. Now, up next, have you ever wanted to be part of a circus troupe? What would your skills be? I'd be a presenter. Let's go to the experts, though, Wilf and Freya. Try to do it with someone else, if you can, to help each other. Hi, I'm Freya. And I'm Wilf, and we're both teachers at Circus Central. We're currently in the Mill Lane building in Fenham in Newcastle. And today I'm going to take you through some handstand drills. So working towards hopefully holding a handstand, but definitely just getting upside down and comfortable like that. So the first thing we're going to do is get warm. So most important thing with handstands is your wrists. So we're going to start off, we're going to come into this box position. So like that. And what you want is wrists under shoulders, knees under hips just like this and the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to squeeze the ground with your fingers and you're going to take them round in some gentle circles. You're going to do a few circles like this, make sure you go both ways and really make sure you're feeling the weight in your fingers as you're going round so they should go like a little bit white as you like push them into the floor. Another important point for this is you want to not do it on a particularly squishy surface because if it's squishy, it's actually going to make the angle of your wrist a bit too steep and that's more likely to make them sore. So make sure you're on a hard surface. The other thing we can do is rock those shoulders forwards, squeeze your fingers into the floor and rock them back. And this is just introducing how you'll actually balance in a handstand. So you rock those shoulders forward. So imagine you're in your handstand, your shoulders have gone forwards. You're going to squeeze those fingers into the floor and that's what's going to help you rebalance yourself just like your toes do when you're standing. Next thing we're going to do is called first knuckle push-ups. So these are your first knuckles here. And what you're going to do is you're going to come up onto those first knuckles and then you're going to slowly lower down. And still in this box position, but what you can do to make it a bit easier is bring your knees closer to your hands and that just takes the weight out of your wrists a little bit and you can go up and down. But similarly, if you take those knees away, it gets a little bit harder and you can do it like that. And your goal is just to keep those thumbs off the floor and keep it nice and steady. So if you're trying and it's really hard and you're going like one up then the other, just make it a little bit easier. Bring those knees in and do it like that. Next thing we're going to do, just some wrist rolls. You roll your wrists like this and make sure you go the other way. 
Last thing we're gonna do, some finger flicks. So you make a really tight fist and flick those fingers out. And this is just gonna warm your forearms up. So really squeeze your fist and that's gonna get blood into your forearms and then pin your fingers out and try and do that as fast as you can. And if you're doing it right, it should make you like scrunch your face up because it's really quite hard to do. And if you want, you can imagine that you're trying to flick water as far as possible. It's that's like when you're drying true. your hands. <laughs> So now your wrists are warm, we're just going to get into the body positioning of the handstand. So it's a little exercise, this is called dish, you might have heard of it before. So for dish what you want is your arms above your head and especially for handstands you want to shrug those shoulders up as high as you possibly can so your shoulders should be by your ears, really shrugging them up. And then the next thing we're going to do is bring those legs up to 90 degrees, so up like that. And what you want is to flatten this space down at the back. So often when people lift their arms up and lift their legs up, this sort of position happens. So Frey, can you just show that? So that, this often happens. So what you want is to really flatten that out. So tuck your pelvis under like this and flatten this space out. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna lower your legs down as low as you can go before you start to arch. So Frey is really good at this, so she can get her legs quite low, but wherever you get your legs to, you get them as low as you can and just hold in this position for 30 seconds. And in those 30 seconds, if you need to bring your legs up and just have a rest, go for it. But really try and hold it for that full 30 seconds. Next thing we're gonna try is just, if you roll over onto your front, and this is a super person position. So what you're gonna do again, reach as far away as you possibly can. You're gonna lift those arms, and then same as before, is you're gonna try and tuck that pelvis under. So this time, you're pushing your hips into the floor, you're pushing your feet into the floor, but you're trying to make a space underneath this time. And this is really, this applies straight into your handstand. This is the position you should be in when you're there. So Frey, if you try again, so reaching away, lift those arms up, try and make a space under. It is really hard, but just try your best. You might not be able to lift your hands off at all. Okay, so for the next bit, you're gonna need a chair or something a similar height. You could use a sofa or even a wall as well. If you take your socks off, you can like stick to a wall at about the right height that you'll need. And for this thing, what we're gonna do is come into our push-up position, but with your feet on the chair. And really important for handstands, wrists under shoulders, just like we were doing in that box position and pushing the floor away, so rounding your back out. Don't wanna sink in and let your shoulders stick out because it makes your handstands feel really heavy. So pushing out, and then this is the first thing you're gonna do, just holding this, and then we're gonna try walking your hands in as far as you feel comfortable, holding at the top, and then walking back out into that push-up position. So walking in, holding for like three seconds, pushing the floor away, and then walking back out. If you're feeling a bit nervous, you can ask someone to spot your shoulders, so I'm not holding Wilf up, I'm just gently being there for him in case he needs me. And that's it for that one. And um, so yeah, walking in, walking out and getting used to pushing the floor over your head. So what you want to think is you're sending your armpit away, if that <laughs> makes sense. So when you're in this position, I'm sending my armpit away from me. So I'm really trying to push the floor over my head. And then the one after that is you're going to come in to that top position and you're going to do some shoulder shrugs. And that's just again going to help you with the pushing the floor away because that really helps you access a bit more shoulder range and also makes your handstand feel a little bit lighter. So you're walking in, come into this top position and you're going to try and do 10 shrugs. So sink in the shoulders, push away, sink, push, sink push and have a go of 10 of them and what you want to avoid with those pushes is it's not coming from bending my elbows it's coming from my shoulders so I'm pushing the floor away then the last one we're going to try is walking in and lifting a leg up so we're actually getting into that handstand position now but that one can be a little scary so having someone to spot you or doing it with a wall behind you but with all of these just be careful because often you might feel a little bit uncomfortable when you're getting up to this height and you might need to like bail forwards. If you do have to bail forwards, 
make sure there's not something you're gonna run into when you're doing that. So, like I was saying, push-up position, putting all of these three things together, walking in, shrugging, and then lifting one leg up and trying to get it so it's in one straight line. As a spotter, I can be here for the leg as well as the body. And trying it on the other side. And just have a go. And this, really important to remember, is actually harder than a handstand. Because your leg's down here, the effort that it takes is harder than when you're in a straight handstand like that. So yeah, like I was saying, that one is physically harder than the handstand, but this one that we're about to do is mentally a little bit more challenging, and obviously this time you're balancing, so it's gonna be, feel quite hard, but give it a go. So we're gonna kick up into our actual handstand. We've got a spotter to catch us, so make sure you give them warning when you're about to go up, and it's a really important job. Freya's gonna tell you a little bit more about that in a second. If you don't have a spotter, you can also use a wall. So for this one, arms straight, thinking about all the things that we were doing before, pushing up and your spotter's gonna catch you at the top. So as a spotter, I'm making sure I'm not helping too much, just enough so that Will's still doing a lot of the work and I'm not pulling him around, I'm letting him find the place that he likes to balance. So after this, you can start to encourage them to do a little bit of tapping so I can make my hands a little bit wider once they're feeling nice and comfortable and I'm just making sure I'm always here. And obviously, I can already handstand, <laughs> so my spotter can move away from me. But as a spotter, you probably don't want to hold it that long on your first go, because your face will get full of blood and it's really hard <laughs> work, and you always want to come down before you feel too tired to come down safely. And as a spotter, part of my job is to, if someone's feeling a bit too fatigued, is to protect their head. So if someone starts falling, you need to make sure that you're keeping them nice and safe so they don't hurt themselves. Yeah, and that's all of the basics towards the beginnings of a handstand. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, bye. Bye. Grab yourself some water, get ready for the next round, okay? So the next round we're gonna do is some shadow boxing, okay? So it is a, a boxing exercise, okay? Really, really easy, don't worry, you don't have to have done any boxing before, okay? It's just about getting active, getting your full body going, okay? So, if you are right-handed, okay, they're getting your stance and guard, you are gonna be nice and straight. Left foot's gonna take a step to the side, left foot forward, little bit of a shimmy, that is your stance, and your arms, Come and nip your cheeks, and that is your stance and guard if you are right-handed. If you're left-handed like me, your south paw, it's right, right leg's gonna move to the side, right foot forward, little twist, up, and stance and guard, and there you are. And all we're gonna do is just throw little jabs, little one-two, so a jab, and then a backhand, and just a little bit of a movement, okay? So to move forward, you take your, foot, your front foot, move first, and then move backwards, your back foot moves back, okay? Move to the side, your front foot goes, your back foot goes that way, okay? Really, really easy, don't worry about it, let's just get active, okay? So two minutes on the clock, nice bit of shadow boxing, okay? So little jabs, little bit of movement, okay? It's absolutely fine, Doesn't have, you don't have to be a world beater, okay? Just about getting active, okay? Like so. Make sure if you are doing it with your family, okay? Make sure if you are throwing jabs out or backhands that you're not gonna hit them, okay? Make sure you've got plenty of space. Stop, stop. You notice I'm not jumping into anything, okay? It doesn't have to be a big, massive movement. Just little steps, that's all it is, okay? Nice little step. This boxing is a really good way of getting, keeping fit, okay? All boxing clubs are really inclusive, okay? So don't worry if you've never done it before. If you just want to go and get fit, absolutely fine. Boxing clubs love new members. <coughs> Okay, so if you want to get involved, I'm sure there'll be a local boxing club. Okay, and just make sure you keep moving about. 
Yeah, and if you need to have a little rest, three or two minutes was absolutely fine. A bit of a shake, then off we go again. Again, just moving around your area, making sure you're not bumping into anything or anyone. Okay, and don't, if you do get involved with boxing, boxing isn't about just punching the other person, okay? It's about the discipline and learning when not to punch, okay? So that's the biggest lesson. About 15 seconds. Two, one, and relax. Well, thank you very much to Freya and Will for that. Some amazing skills there. Thank you to everyone for showing us your interesting activities. Now, coming up tomorrow, Michelle has some fun facts about how we can use social media safely. Then we'll be back over to Rosie for some more yoga, stretchy clothing at the ready for that one. And Michelle's going to show us how to create some crafts from recycled materials. Then we're over to Claire for more mindfulness at the word. So get in touch with us on the show. It's hashtag holiday hub. And one little riddle for overnight sake. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What am I? Footsteps. See you tomorrow.